You always have to think about the user and who you're targeting. So I've spent a good part of my, my career really either targeting women or targeting you know, young adults, 18 to 34, and watching their, their behaviors is so critical. When you think about where we're all gonna be in the future, and you think about how important curation is, it really does make a big difference um, because we're all getting so spoiled about how we need the world curated for us given that there's so much content out there. Everything is really curated and is a niche. So you can find whatever your interests are on the platform. And then similarly for podcasting, you know, now we've become a big podcast platform. So for all those, you know, different opportunities and then being able to grow that in a on a global basis and you know, look at the podcast business and it's first exploding. It's almost kind of where video was a few years ago, if you think about it. Everybody knew that it was gonna be a new medium and everybody was getting excited about it, but not everybody understood how it was really gonna manifest. And that's where I feel we are with podcasts now. Yeah, I completely agree with podcasts. I don't think you love or the consumer loves Star Wars or The Simpsons because it's a TV show or movie. I think they love the characters. Mm. I think they love the stories. And the reason that I think The Simpsons will be valuable IP in 50 years, and no matter whether we're wearing headsets in 100 years, Star Wars people will play it, is because of the stories and characters. And podcasts, it's just a new distribution medium. It's an incredibly fascinating distribution medium, but I believe podcasts have the chance to birth the next great characters and stories, the same way I believe Crypt is. We just chose to do video because of monsters and that visual. We really want to be Marvel for Monsters. And what excites me about building for a young audience, which is I'm sure what excites you about Spotify, it's what you said, it's the future. Right now I talk about our 13 to 24 audience because it's our biggest demo. These are the people who are not getting cable. These are the people who are not going to movies the same way. But the 24 year old that's in that demo right now, they're not gonna all of a sudden get a cable Jeez. package when they get turned 25. The demo's gonna grow. And in five years, we'll be saying 13 to 30. And by the way, people who are 35 now are switching to our way of doing business. They're becoming Spotify members more quickly than they are staying with the cable bundle. So the reason I think the growth of our characters can be huge is we've already set up shows on streaming, characters at theme parks, sold merchandise. I think we can just kind of do more of it and really, really grow it. How do you use this amazing information Spotify has to get ahead of media trends? I think that's why the human element that Spotify has is so important in addition to the algorithm. But you, sitting in the content boss chair, how do you think that that information can propel your content decisions? Well, you know, it's funny because you always have to think about the user and who you're targeting. So I've spent a good part of my, my career really either targeting women or targeting you know, young adults, 18 to 34. And watching their, their behaviors is so critical um, and it shifts and changes so fast. Like even when you think about Gen Z versus millennials, like two Completely totally different. different. And people don't the get that. The way people my 21 year old sister uses the internet is completely different than the way me at 27 uses the internet. And the things that are endemic to her, I'm like so slow and behind on. So totally different. And but people, everyone just says, oh yeah, you know, the millennials and Gen Zers, and they just mm -hmm. throw them in a bucket. But you can't, when you really understand the nuances and you understand how they consume content, be it either audio content or video content, it's totally different. They're, they're, you know, the social platforms they use are different. Like there's so many nuances. And what people don't understand is that what you make for YouTube would be different than what you would make for Facebook is different than what you would make for Snap. And so your storytelling style is different wherever the consumer is going to be and how they're going to actually watch. And that's watch. a form of showing respect for the consumer by understanding that the way they experience content on different platforms and why they go to those platforms is different. So you should cater to the experience in a way that I think keeps the storytelling intact but still respects the platforms.